we want to welcome you. Uh, we are live right now, but you may be watching us later this May the 10th at 10 a.m. And this is the uh, uh, fifth Sunday of Easter. This is also a special day. A happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. We hope you have a good one. Uh, one additional announcement. Uh, just uh, for our members, those of us who receive a flock note, uh, we just sent out a flock note to you about worship in the future, and it's two separate questions. It's not one or the other. Um, it's a flock note that, that asks your opinion on uh, coming back together for physical worship and a separate question on continuing online worship. And so we hope that you will look for that flock note, and we want your opinion. So let us begin worship. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he, Jesus, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us sing together our first of three hymns. Hymn 380, if you have your hymnal, it is Hallelujah, Jesus Lives. Our New Testament lesson for today is from Peter's first letter, the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Peter writes, Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. 
Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 14. John writes that Jesus proclaimed, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we thank Kate for that reading. Uh, now, the kids and adults, too, if you want to join in, we've got a special message for you. And it's a song I want to teach you, partly because uh, Peter, in the first lesson, talked about Jesus being our cornerstone, our rock. And it reminded me of a wonderful song that I have sung with many kids in my ministry as a pastor. So first of all, I'm going to uh, explain it all to you. First of all, I will sing, I will call upon the Lord, and then you will echo that. Uh, then I will sing, who is worthy to be praised, and you sing, who is worthy to be praised. And then I will sing, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And you will sing, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And then I'll go to the verse. And there are special uh, hand movements for that. There are different versions. I'll give you one of them. And that is like this. If you can follow me along, the Lord liveth, and liveth is like this. So, the Lord liveth, and um, blessed be the rock. I'm sorry. The, the, <laughs> the Lord liveth, clap, clap, and blessed be the rock, clap, clap. And let the God of my salvation, we're making a cross, be exalted. That's what we do when we exalt. We lift God up. So let's go through that. I'll say it together with you right now. The Lord liveth, clap, and blessed be the rock, clap, clap, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. So I'm going to sing it through, 
And you can join with me once through, and then we're going to sing it twice through together. Uh, and the adults, please join us. So, so, we're, so echo the first part. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. That's your part. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Let's sing the, the next part together. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. So let's sing the whole thing through, verse and chorus, twice through. Here we go. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Thank you, boys and girls. And now for my sermon. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, my mother and dad called Diane and me last Sunday in the early evening, and we talked of many things. My mother right away shared her opinion that because the way things are this year, to please not send her flowers, which is what I usually do. I a little grudgingly agreed, but promised to send her a card. Wait, did I forget? Oh, I'll be back. No, I, uh, I did send it on Monday. I hope you got it, Mom, for Mother's Day, dear mother of mine. Later in the conversation, we got on the topic of the time our family had to move from where I first lived, a little town called Buda in Illinois, to another little town, Erie, also in Illinois. My parents told the story to, to us of how after my dad got uh, the job of grade school principal in Erie, we could not find a place to live, nothing to buy, nothing to rent. I learned a new detail in this retelling that when my dad had to move to Erie, the plan was for my mother, my little sister, and three-year-old me to go five hours south to temporarily live with my mother's parents, my grandparents, until dad found a place. Then mother said, just before the three of us were about to go down south, that the mayor of Erie, the mayor of the town, Mr. Miller, found a place for us to rent. Phew. And so mother and we kids came to see this house. Now you have to remember that this was back in 1965. Remember what shows were popular in 1965? So anyway, my mother says, And David, when you saw this ugly-looking house, you said, Oh, are we going to live in the Munster's house? And yes, so we were. This house, probably the ugliest porch I've ever seen, 
It was a, a, a black and slate gray peppered granite thing. But, but remember, it was still a place to stay. For a time, it was home. We long for home sometimes, both, both physically and metaphorically. Metaphorically, in our hearts, home represents comfort. Home represents dependable and secure days and nights. Home is in our minds, a spiritual space, a reliable space that we all desire to have these days. In our gospel today, the disciples are probably feeling what we sometimes feel these days. In that upper room, the night that Christ was betrayed, just before the gospel passage that Kate just read to you, Jesus had just informed the disciples that he would be betrayed and arrested in just a few hours that night. They would be without him. Where I'm going, he said, you cannot come. Simon Peter then claims that he will protect Jesus, that, that he will lay down his life for his Lord. But Jesus predicts Peter's three denials. Jesus, no doubt, knew how completely crushed his disciples, his friends, were at that moment. And it is then that he says to them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? These are words of comfort. A divine promise spoken with the utmost confidence. For Jesus went on to say, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. I have been in some scary places in my life. But I have to tell you that as long as I knew someone was with me or someone was taking care of me, I was fine. Not ecstatic, but fine. I was little back then when we moved to Erie, to that eerie, ha-ha place. But I was fine because my parents were there with me and for me. And I was later told a Mr. Miller was there for us as well. We are living in a quite gloomy-looking place right now, and we hope that it is quite temporary. We cannot foresee the length of this crisis, nor do we know the extent of the sacrifices this time will require of us. The same thing was true of the disciples in that suddenly stifling upper room. The disciples could recollect at that point, the times when, as they approached Jerusalem, their Lord predicted his death several times. They had put it out of their minds until now. They had kept following Jesus. They had, they had always wanted to be near Jesus, but now he said he was going. But where? And what would this new place be like? What sacrifices would the new time coming require of them? You know, last week we looked at the 23rd Psalm, and there's that famous last line. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me point out that for many uh, scholars, that word follow, as in follow me, should really be translated pursue, not follow. So it would Run like this. Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. The implication being that it will pursue. God will pursue us and catch us. For God is, is really good at fulfilling all his promises. So I want you to take some time right now. I want to provide a time for all of us to pray in our hearts. Providing a time of silence. For what is, whatever it is, really laying heavy on our hearts lately. I'll give you a silent time to think for a bit about that. And later, a little bit later, more silent time to pray about that. Okay, let's think about what our biggest fears and worries are right now.
uh, but not cutting you off. Uh, let's now take some time in prayer right now, if you will, about those fears and worries. Next step. Now I want you to imagine something. Imagine you holding these thoughts and prayers, be they concerns or worries or fears or whatever, and you see the risen Jesus approaching you after all the 23rd Psalm said he would always pursue you to bring you goodness and mercy. In. And I want you to close your eyes and listen to this from Jesus regarding not just heaven when we die, but nowadays as well. Let's close our eyes. And you give these concerns and worries and fears to him. Okay, eyes closed. You're giving them to him. All of them. Jesus takes them. Jesus responds to us giving these things to him, takes them from us, and also tells us and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, he says, so that wherever I am, you may be also. Now, as we read in Hebrews, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus has our past, our present, and our future in his hands. In other words... He has you in his hands. And he proclaims today that he will never leave us alone. That he will never give up on us. That he will never leave us in the lurch, his church. Jesus will take us, as he says today, to his place. A place with many rooms. Now the, the Greek word for room here is like a wayside inn. Not a permanent place. That part Jesus will take us to later. This wayside inn is a time period where there is darkness around us. But as Jesus said earlier in that upper room, we have the light, Jesus, to guide us through. Jesus told the disciples and tells us today, while you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. And with that promise, my dearly beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, with that promise from God becomes a deeper purpose from God. For you and me to be children of light in these times. To offer to others by the power of the Holy Spirit welling up deep inside of you the following things. Unconditional love, deeply calming peace. The kind of joy that, that always is grateful, patience beyond measure, understanding of others that are made in God's image and likeness, humility, generosity, and treating others with a surprising kindness because we realize everyone is our kind. Now is the opportunity, our opportunity, now more than ever, to be children of light, presenting the ever-beaming light of the love of Jesus to others. No matter the problem, no matter the circumstance. You are the light of the world, our master once informed us. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all the house, to all in the house. All in the home. Our new home for King of Glory and probably for other churches in these times. Our new home for King of Glory has become much bigger than we ever imagined it could be. Our light able to shine among new pathways of the internet and social media. As well as not giving up all the old and just as important ways. Going back to what we heard in our gospel today. We can now understand being children of light in this dark time, some of the craziest things that Jesus said 
back then. For instance, when Jesus tells us today, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Of course, the greatest work ever done was when Jesus lifted us all up to heaven when he lifted himself onto that cross. So, when Christ talks of greater works than the works that he does, he does not mean the cross. But what he does mean are the loving, focused, intentional, thoroughly discerned, caring goodness that the Spirit pushes us to do for others near and far away. In the extraordinary and sometimes very ordinary things we do or call to do every day. In our hymn we are are about to sing, we will sing of loud building workers. May we be loud building workers, building up God's kingdom of love at not just this challenging time, but also this opportune time. For Jesus is scouting ahead of us, preparing our place, preparing our opportunities to show love. And as he tells us today, Then he will come again and take us to himself, so that where he is, there we, his ambassadors, are and will be also. In these strange days and nights, you can count on it. Amen. Now let us sing our congregational song. Earth and all stars, and it's hymn 731 for your hymnal. See 
as I keep saying every week. The first thing I think of when I see this offering plate today is a feeling of great gratitude for all of you who are continuing to contribute to King of Glory's mission and ministry financially. You see on the screen the link for e-giving if you are interested in giving that way. Uh, we are even more grateful, though, for your prayers, your continued prayers of support. Thank you. Now let us say a great creed, one of the two great creeds of the church together, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we will have the prayers. If you have any special prayers uh, for the chur church, for me to pray, or the church in general, please uh, uh, communicate with us by email or through the website, our Facebook, and also our Facebook page is available as well. Let us pray together as a people. O oh Lord, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, as we continue to celebrate Christ's resurrection, we ask you to enlighten and inspire scientists, doctors, and other medical specialists to do all they can against this COVID-19 virus. May the rate of its infection decrease so that hospitals and clinics will not be overwhelmed. Guide all our medical staff to take the best actions for their own care as well, both mentally and physically. Guide all world, national, state, and local governmental leaders to make the right decisions that will benefit all people. Lord Jesus, we are thankful that you made people in your image and called them not only to spread your gospel directly, but also indirectly, as Luther has pointed out from Scripture, in order to help this world be as safe and healthy and prosperous as possible. We are thankful that in these ways, both through the church and in the world you made, we, your workers, may do the works that you do, and as you have added, do greater works than these. We pray for mothers, grandmothers, and for all mother figures on this Mother's Day. Though we may not be able to be with our mothers and grandmothers physically today, you, O oh Lord, Give us the power to be with our mothers and grandmothers spiritually and even virtually today and every day. We are eternally grateful for your gift to us from many different women in our lives of mother love, the greatest earthly love of all, a selfless, selfless unconditional love that is a great reflection of your love, dear Lord Jesus. We continue special prayers for Karen Anderson, our missionary, for her Epis ministry in Chile, and for our sister synod, the Lutheran Church of Chile, 
as they too have to deal with this disease. We pray for comfort for them as they endure the forced separation of Karen up here in America from her ministry. Help them all move forward in faith. O Holy Spirit, please be with those who are in need of your special healing, your great comfort, and your awesome strength. Be with those we know who have this virus, and also be with those who are otherwise sick or injured, recovering, such as Lee, Lynn, Helen, Vaughn, Gary, Marion, Camilla, and Jane. We pray as well for family and friends and for others who are in our hearts in these moments of silence. Lord, help us to realize at all times, whenever we feel we cannot help people directly, especially in times like these, that we still can always support others through our prayers for them. We prayed for these dear ones, O Heavenly Father, and now we place them into your hands, trusting as always in your forgiveness and love, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me and my ways. After supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this and remember me. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in his grace and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together now our song, hymn 618, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in worship. Please join us every Thursday as we continue our live weekly devotion, Boost from the Bible, at noon live on Thursdays, which this worship, like this worship, you can also see later as well on our website. Because you see older services and devotions are now archived at the bottom of our website first page. And we'll see you again at 10 a.m. next Sunday for the sixth Sunday of Easter. May God be with you.